The week before Election Day, it's always good to get the perspective of a few political insiders. Columnist John Brummett sat down with Senator Jason Rapert and Richard Bearden of Impact Management Group for a conversation on the state of the presidential race. Okay, fellas, we moved our Republican primary to March 1. It's upon us, and it's a big deal. All of a sudden, it's a big deal. Tell me, Richard, as a longtime Republican expert, everybody's been saying Marco Rubio has to win a state someday. He's going to have to actually win a state. Asa Hutchison was on Fox News Friday morning saying it might be Arkansas. Do you think Arkansas could be the place where we'll hear on Tuesday night Marco finally won one? I, I certainly think it's, uh, it's in the mix. Uh, you've got the endorsement of the governor. You've got the endorsement of Congressman uh, Steve Womack, the Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin. Do those matter to anybody? Well, I think they do in a state that has increasingly become more Republican. I think people recognize those names. They might not know uh, all the ins and outs of the particular stands about the presidential candidates, but they trust the state leaders. And so I think if you look at where turnout is, Benton County, uh, Pulaski County, Sebastian County, I'm not seeing huge up t upticks so far in early voting that would say to me that it's going to be a primary in which there's kind of an outside ball yet. Could happen, but so far not yet. If there is that outside ball, that would presumably be Trump supporters, Could, white, white rural independent yes. voters crossing over. Right. And again, I don't see that yet. I thought about 100,000. That's not, it's not significant. But it's high in the places where oh. traditional Republicans vote. And I think those okay. traditional Republicans are going to come out, they're establishment Republicans, and vote for Marco Rubio. Okay, Senator Rapert, Cruz supporter, mm -hmm. yes, but, a, but a political analyst all the same who understands your Republican Party. Uh, uh, answer this for me. I've analyzed this as establishment Republicans, evangelical conservative Republicans such as yourself, and then this unknown factor of working class independents uh, who might not normally vote in sort of a battle royal that could be a close three-way race. Within the context of you're hoping Cruz gets the most votes, do you think that analysis is fair as to what's at, what's at play in this particular primary? I think it is fair, and you know, Richard made good points, but here's something very clear. The establishment's not winning. When you have Trump out here and the wins that he's had, simultaneous wins coming off of this, I don't care who you are, you have to pay attention to the message that's being sent. And I really think that the evangelical vote and this unknown factor that you're talking about have a lot more in common than the establishment. The fact of the matter is, Democrat or Republican, Washington has, has fumbled the ball. And they're basically saying, even that's why they forgive Trump of things that you would never let me get away with saying. They forgive him of things that you would never have thought could be forgiven. And, and to me, it's a, it's a phenomenon. Uh, it's surreal in some cases. And I do think in Arkansas, Cruz was leading in the last poll that we saw, okay? I think that it's more of a Cruz Trump than it is a Cruz Rubio. But uh, we know they're of, tightening. In terms, of, in terms of who might win it? That's, a, that's correct. You think, you think the governor's going to be out there campaigning with Rubio a couple of times? You've got the whole slate of establishment Republicans, and you personally think Rubio will run third? Well, it's going to be close. But let me say this. Close among all A three. lot of the endorsements didn't come to late. I, I agree. The die has been cast in a lot of these races. People are, have really made up their mind on a lot of people, it seems like when you hear them. I mean, because in Iowa, where Ted Cruz won the very first thing, I was there at the caucuses. I went and spoke for my friend Mike Huckabee. And we, he, people would come in and say they love Mike Huck Huckabee, and then they just hammered us in the caucus. And those people were going with Cruz. Those people were going with what they see as a man that has the experience, the knowledge, and the capability to lead this nation. And I think he's proven that. If I could, I agree sure. with everything Senator Raper just said, except I think it's going to be a two-way race between uh, Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. I don't yet see the Trump factor. 8,000 people turned out at uh, Barton Coliseum. Again, someone that was there said most of these people were from rural parts of the state. I don't yet see in the early voting numbers that those counties Richard, are showing upticks. We talked earlier in the week, and you talked about the possibility of a different, of an upturned primary where it's going to look like, where it's going to be all these Trump people who who gum up the usual works. Now you must have been watching the early voting or that you, I, I that am, you're, I'm, and you're thinking it's not going to happen. I, I just don't see it yet. Maybe those people come in and vote on election day, but at least in Ashley, Drew, Grant, Lone Oak counties, you just don't see 
numbers that look unusual from past primaries. Just, just ruined my Sunday column, but that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I tell you, there is something that's There's a time. phenomenon no, no. that is hard to explain, and that, that is some of the leading evangelicals endorsing Donald Trump. Uh, it's just, it's hard to explain, and nobody can explain it. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell it, you. It offends you, doesn't it? Uh, well, here's the thing. Be who you are. And, and I, I won't go further into what some of the comments have been some, from some people, but here's the thing. He owns a 35,000 square foot strip club <clears throat> in a casino. Now, what pastor at the Church of Christ or the Baptist Church or anywhere is going to get up and brag on that and also endorse the guy. So the thing is, is that they need to figure out what they stand for in some regards. Now, if he's changed, as you know, John, even you can change. Right. Possibly. So, Possibly. you know, we, we you know, ob obviously there could be changes, but I think it is something everybody, Democrat or Republican, needs to really pay attention to what's happening here. I think it's anti-establishment all the way. Okay. Uh, by the way, quick answer. Uh, a real funny columnist wrote in the paper this week that uh, Ted Cruz has Jason Rapert with an Ivy League education. You didn't take any offense at that, did you? <laughs> I went to UCA. I think I have an Ivy League <laughs> education. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't take any offense to that because, first of all, how I know Ted Cruz, I spent a little time now, in Israel with his dad. It was a long sermon. No, right? and here's the thing. I got to know, I sit there and listen to his father talk about literally escaping with the, just an inch of his life out of Cuba before he was ever running for president. So when I hear them get up and talk about who they are, I know that's exactly who they are. That's something I can believe. The problem I have with some of these candidates is four years ago, they were funding Democrats in this race and they were saying completely different things. So here's the thing, at the end of the day, Jason Rapert is gonna be for whoever that GOP nominee is because if we don't, Absolutely. the country may be lost in the next generation. Yeah, I agree. One thing we ought to just touch on, I don't know that it amounts to much, no offense to her, but Speaking of Arkansas, Arkansans and the, and the Republican presidential race, Mike Huckabee's daughter and campaign manager, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, this week signed on the Trump campaign. Do you make anything of that in terms of its consequence for Arkansas? And does it indicate Huckabee is actually a Trumpster at heart? I mean, it, what, how do you react to that news, it, if at all? It, it could be. I don't, I don't, we don't know yet. The governor has not endorsed anybody uh, like uh, Jason, I supported the governor early on in his candidacy. Sarah has, it's a career, she's uh, mm -hmm. involved in consulting, so I, I, I take it at that. She was offered the opportunity to help, it's probably good for Trump. Uh, I don't, I don't yet way, know now its has ways. a new communications director, Alice Stewart. Alice Stewart. Alice Stewart After the yeah. first one, had to step aside Cruz, yeah. over some yeah. issues. Okay. It remains to be seen. Let's, let's, let's turn to this uh, other matter, and not only is this an epic uh, Republican <coughs> presidential primary in Arkansas, one that's gotten us great, I think it'll get us national attention. We are, we're, and, and all this attention over the weekend yeah. with the three, yeah, three right. candidates. But as a, the, the fact of the matter is, the future of Arkansas, not to overstate, is at stake in this, pri in this primary, this Republican primary, in that the private option is on the ballot in about two Senate races, Arkansas works if you care, call it that, three House races, where the main issue is between a supporter of Arkansas Works of the Private Option and an opponent, and everybody knows those appropriation votes are so razor thin that one unfavorable outcome for private option supporters could have real effect on the state budget, on state hospitals, on, right? Am I right, uh, Senator? That's correct. Well, first and what of all, do you, do you have a you hazard a guess on how that might turn well, out? Well, I think it is very correct. One thing I will say, uh, I don't like seeing what I have seen in our primary this time. Uh, Arkansas did what it needed to do to survive under the Affordable Care Act. Not one state legislator ever voted for Obamacare, never had a chance to vote for it or vote against it. What they've done to Senator They're Williams... they the wrap-up sign, so uh, to when, they, when they do that, it's wrong. I think that what you're going to find is that, depending on the primary, that's going to sort of set the tone going into the session. And what I hope that we do is until we can get a Republican president to be able to come in and unwind what has happened with the Affordable Care Act, if we want to, we're going to have to do what we need to do in Arkansas to survive until that time. And that's what I think has been the approach. It's a governor's approach. Okay. 
And I, I, Richard, I believe final that. Question, do, you th do you think I overstated what's at stake? Do you think it's that? I don't, and I don't think we know what the outcome is. I think there will, there will be some races that will be very close. I think some of them may more local issues. Some of them, I agree, the private option may be on the ballot. I, the, the governor is very popular here. I know he's campaigning hard for those candidates. He's being opposed by the conduit for commerce and some of the other various okay. groups that are dumping money in. Uh, gotta, gotta we'll stop. see. Got to stop. We're out of time. We're a little bit past time, as I figured we would be. And there's much more to that conversation. You didn't think John Brummett and Jason Rapert wouldn't talk for less than a half hour, did you? You can catch the full roundtable at talkbusiness.net. That is all for this week's program. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Remember, vote Tuesday.